USB Type-C. You are probably using this connector right now to charge your phone or even your laptop. If not, you might have at least heard about USB-C and its wonders, the one standard to rule them all for at least the next foreseeable future. While this wondrous connector has numerous benefits, the USB Type-C connector has also got a lot of confusing things about it as well. In this video, we'll be going through everything you need to know about the USB Type-C connector. USBs today are in almost everything we use. It has become an integral part of our digital ecosystem. USBs are such a core of our world today that the USB shaped icons have become synonymous with computers and technologies everywhere. This wasn't always the case. Back in the early days of computers, it was absolute chaos for the average user. There was a whole range of proprietary serial and parallel ports that were used to connect computer peripherals to their personal computers. This was a common problem for both manufacturers and the consumers. Without any standardization, manufacturers couldn't build devices that would work with every machine. So in 1995, a few technology companies like Compaq, Intel, IBM and Microsoft came together and decided to use a standard device protocol across all their devices to ensure cross compatibility. This also gave birth to the USB implementers for Forum, or USBIF. This was a non-profit organization that supports and promotes the use of universal serial bus throughout the globe. USB-C is an industry standard connector for transmitting both data and power through a single cable. USB-C, also known as Type-C, is the latest connector developed by the USB Implementers Forum. The primary purpose of USB-IF is to standardize USB connectors. This is helpful for both the consumer and device manufacturers. USB Type-C is the next step from USB Type-A and Type-B style connectors. And even the micro USB connector that was so popular on a lot of Android phones and devices just a few years ago, USB-C is now a requirement for consumers for its benefits. However, the tech forums are now plagued with issues related to USB-C. The first thing to note about USB-C is it's just a physical interface in its core, meaning that USB Type-C itself is just a connector. Like the HDMI port or three and a half mil jack, it just defines how the component communicates between each other and draws its power. So USB Type-C itself isn't responsible for any extra speed or performance. This means that you can have a USB Type-C connector that is slower than a USB-A port and not even deliver the same power like a USB-A port can. So the USB Type-C connector can have different data rates and power ratings depending upon the kind of USB it actually is and what USB generation it supports. More on that later. Many mobile phones are already using USB Type-C connectors. It offers more power delivery capacity and has a reversible plug-in, meaning that unlike previous USB generations, you can plug it in either way and it will still work. This was game-changing because Apple's Lightning connector was really the only mainstream connector of this type, but it was closed off from everyone to use and the data speeds of the Lightning connector was appalling. I'll get into speeds of USB Type-C later, but USB-C really did open up several technologies and convenience since USB-C can deliver up to 100 watts of power, well, for now, and more on that in a second, a lot of laptops use USB-C to charge up their batteries, meaning you no longer have to have all of these proprietary DC connectors that honestly five years ago was the norm with laptops. On a lot of new laptops, USB-C ports are replacing regular USB Type-A ports for good because of its versatility and data speeds. And whether you like it or not, it's gonna be the future. While it's generally true that USB Type-C is faster than USB Type-A and Type-B ports, it's not always the case. Before we can talk about data transfer speeds, we need to go through some of the USB jargon to better understand what we are dealing with. The most common types of USB generations in the market are USB 2.0, 3.2 Gen 1, also known as 3.0, USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, USB 4, and lastly, Thunderbolt. Yeah, I know, that's a lot, 
hence why I'm making this video. Here's a chart of the types, speeds, and connections that you'll find all of these in. As you can see from the slowest to the fastest, USB Type-C can be implemented in all of them, which means as a consumer, you have to make an active effort to check not only what your port accepts, but also what cable will work with that connection. Yep, that's right. Not every USB Type-C cable will work either. So depending on the generation of both your port and the cable, you will have different speeds. And just remember, if you use the wrong cable with the wrong port, you will be limited to the slowest speeds among the two. So what are the things you should know about USB-C before you go out and buy yourself a cable or a device with a USB-C port? The first obvious thing would be to check if your device actually has a USB-C port. That's because the USB-C port can look similar to other ports. If your model does have a USB Type-C port, you should also check what type it is. You can generally find the speeds and type by referring to this chart over here. Pause the screen so you can check out the icons and obviously refer that back to your USB Type-C port. The most foolproof way to check is just to read the user manual for your device. You'll also need to check if your device actually supports charging via its USB Type-C port. Just to let you know, the power delivery on USB Type-C can go up to 100 watts. And if that isn't enough, USB Type-C power delivery is bi-directional. This means that power flows both ways. This means that you can send and receive power and can also transfer data across this same connection. Now that doesn't mean your device will be able to charge at 100 watts. So check the wattage of your device because you may end up spending more on a cable that can, let's say, handle 100 watts when your device can only charge at 30 watts, for example. In May of 2021, however, a new standard of USB-C was announced and that was 2.1. This can actually support up to 240 watts of power, but this is still very new at the time of making this video. However, if you're watching this in the future, then this this is something that you should also be aware of. It is also worth mentioning that a new cable for this type of new power delivery will be needed and most likely none of your USB Type-C cables that you have will work with this new USB Type-C 2.1 standard. It's important to note that just because you have a USB Type-C port on your laptop for example doesn't mean it supports charging. It could just be used for data transfer. It's also worth noting that while MacBooks for many, many years have used USB Type-C ports that have been able to support charging via any one of them, Windows laptops are not the same. In many cases, a Windows laptop that may have two or more USB Type-C ports will only support charging via one of them. You must also ensure that your computer or device supports USB-C DisplayPort Alternative Mode, otherwise it's not going to work with external displays. Now, if you are getting a USB Type-C cable, it's important to know that longer cables can impact data transfer speeds. So just because you can buy a 10 meter long USB-C cable doesn't mean you should. Signal degrades over long distances and you'll find that the limits of each of the standards can be anywhere from let's say 0.8 meters to around three meters. Also, the cable must support the speeds that you are looking to achieve. For example, you cannot use a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C cable with a Thunderbolt port and expect Thunderbolt speeds. You will either be locked to the Gen 2 speeds or it might not work at all. And it's the same the other way around. You can't buy a Thunderbolt cable and expect your speeds to double from USB 3.2 Gen 2 everything from the port to the device that you are connecting to, to the cable that you are using between them must all have the same standard. My best advice personally is that when you're searching for a cable, if it doesn't say which standard it supports on the listing, then it probably supports the lowest USB 2.0 standard. Also, make sure that you look at the cables and see what markings it says, because most of the time there will be some kind of marking letting 
letting you know whether it's capable of certain speeds or not. Most ports on your computer as well will normally have any one of the USB standard symbols. The thing is, you're going to see a lot more USB Type-C in the future if you aren't already seeing it. USB Type-C is the current standard for physical interfaces and it's going to remain like that for the next foreseeable future. Just bear in mind that USB Type-C is just a connector. It has nothing really to do with the protocols. So make sure you are matching all of the protocols together and you'll be in safe hands. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you enjoy videos like this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you stay updated. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.